Hi guys, welcome to Terrain Pit. What you're seeing here is a table that I've built for the game Zombie Side, a collaborative board game in which the players must take on the role of survivors who must work together to kill hordes of violent, unthinking zombies. You and your team of survivors must move across the map, in and out of buildings, searching for supplies and weapons while killing all zombies in your path. Each map is made up of any number of modular tiles. I've built four 3D versions of these tiles. The minimum number of tiles needed to play the smallest scenario in the game, Small Town, pictured here. It consists of one large corner building, two small standalone buildings, and a bunker. Each building has a removable roof and detailed interior rooms. I've gotten tired of playing the same scenario over and over again, so I've decided to build a few more tiles that will allow me to play some bigger maps. To play a few of the bigger maps, I'll need to build two more corner buildings and two large buildings. But that's going to be a pretty long process. So today I'm just going to show you how to build the base tiles for each of these buildings. The first material you'll need are cork floor tiles, which you should be able to find at any hardware store. I cut the tiles to be 25 centimeters square, the same size as the tiles from the game. Which I then give a quick sand. The next material you'll need is 5mm foam board. This will be glued under the cork tile to give it rigidity and strength. I've cut the foam board to the same dimensions as the cork tile, and I've stuck them together using wood glue. Next I seal the gap between the foam board and the cork tile using no more gap, cleaning up and smoothing it out with water. Once it's dry I sand it down to make sure that the surface is even. Now it's time to add the pavement and building foundations. To do this I use 5mm AK construction foam. I cut out strips of foam about 3cm wide to build the curb and sidewall and ensure that the road is about 5cm wide. For the curb around the corner buildings I join two strips together using wood glue and pins. Now it's time to apply the undercoat to the tiles. I use some basic black paint to paint the roads around 5cm wide and the tile sides. I forgot to mention, I also cut out holes in the road for the manhole covers. I got these manhole covers from a small company called Dragonforge Design. I ensured that the hole that I cut was deep enough for the manhole to sit flush with the road. As for the manhole placement, I copied the exact placement from the original game tiles. Once I cleaned the covers, I glued them into position. Once they were done, I gave them a quick prime. Next, I painted them using a mix of flat brown and black grey to create that rusted look. Then I gave the covers a wash using army painted dark tone. Then using a mix of flat brown and German orange, I dry brushed the covers. Next, I take a bit of rust pigment, mix that with a bit of pigment binder, Then using a small bit of rough sponge, I dab the pigment onto the covers in a random pattern. Doesn't look too bad. Finally, once that's dry, I seal it using a matte varnish. This will protect the paint from those zombie hordes. Now that those are done, I glue them into place on the tiles. Next, I apply some AK Terrain's asphalt onto the road surface. I start by filling in the gap around the manhole using a pallet knife.
I then apply a layer of the asphalt texture over the road surface. Once I've applied the texture, I smooth it out using a large wet brush. Now it's time to detail the sidewalks. I start by applying a coat of AK Terrain's concrete onto the front and the tops of the sidewalks. When they're dry, I give them a quick sand. This is probably not how AK recommend you use their product, but it's just my little technique. Then using a fine pencil, I draw the joints on the sidewalk. I first draw the curb, which is five millimeters from the edge. I then draw the sidewalk pavers, which are three centimeters long. I also draw the joints in the curb, which are two centimeters apart. I draw these joints on the top and at the front of the curb. I then go over these lines with a fresh precision knife, ensuring not to cut too deeply. Then, with the back end of the precision knife, I go over the lines again in order to give the grooves I created a bit more width. Next, I paint the sidewalks with some light grey. Then, I stipple white paint onto the sidewalks with a bit of rough sponge. Next, I speckle some black paint mixed with water over the sidewalk. This creates the look of old pieces of gum and trash on the concrete. Then, I coat the sidewalk in a brown wash. Now to create the zebra crossings. First, I use masking tape to create a two and a half centimeter wide space, five centimeters from the edge of the tile where there is road. I then cut strips of masking tape long ways to be half a centimeter high. I then cut these strips to roughly the width of the crossing and space them half a centimeter apart, with the tape at the bottom of the crossing being just 2.5 millimeters. Then using masking tape and a bit of paper, I mask off all the road surface that I've already painted, other than the crossings of course. I then airbrush the gaps in the tape with white paint to create the zebra crossing. Once that's dry, you can peel the tape off. Because this is meant to be an apocalypse, you don't want the crossing to be too clean. 
so I dabbed the crossing with a bit of black paint on some rough sponge. Next it's time to actually fix the sidewalk to the tile. To do this, I simply apply a bit of wood glue and fix the sidewalk to be about 5cm away from the road's edge. I recommend you ensure this aligns with the other tiles you're building. Finally, I apply a bit more brown wash to the crossings to make them look nice and dirty. And that's it, I've finished the base tiles for my 3D zombie side board. I will add a bit more weathering later once the, the buildings are put in place, but they're pretty much done for now. I plan to make this part of a multi-part series where I record how I construct all of the buildings in their interiors. Next up I'm actually planning to build an abandoned garage on one of the large building bases, so please stay tuned and I'll see you guys next time.